Hi, welcome to Zebo TV. I hope that you are extremely good today. So I'm going to explain to you the sign rule. The sign rule. It's very simple and straightforward. The sign rule. We use it to find either side or angle. So I'm going to give you the formulas. Let's say we have got this triangle. This is our A. This is our B and this is our C. What I like about the sign rule is that unlike the Pythagoras theorem and the Pythagorean triple, Pythagoras theorem is only applicable on a right angle triangle. The fortunate part is that the sign rule is applicable on any triangle. Given that we'll be having all the necessary information that we need for us to apply the sign rule. So if this is angle A, this side become side A. If this is angle C, this side become side C. This angle B, the opposite side becomes side B. And the sign rule, it says that A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which will be equal to C over sine C, like this. So what you need on sign rule is for you to have two complete side and angle, right? Why I'm saying complete side and angle, let's say for instance we have got this angle A, let's say it's 81 degrees, and this side A will be equal to uh, 7 centimeters. Then maybe you have uh, the other angle. You can be given one angle and side. When you are given angle C, you'll be asked to find side C. Or when you are given side C, then you'll be asked to find angle C. If you are given one complete angle and side, when I'm saying complete, I mean this will be complete, right? Or you can be given this complete or that complete, right? In this case, let us uh, find, uh, okay, let us find side. Let's say you are given that this one is uh, 60 degrees, right? Then you'll be asked to find side C. How do you do that? It's very simple. You are just going to use the formula A over sine A is equal to C over sine C. You just ignore this. I just see, I give you all of them so that um, whenever you are asked to find either this using that, you, you just know the formula. Uh, some textbooks, they will do it vice versa. It's still one the same thing. They can say sin A over A. Okay, let me show you. They can say sin A over A is equal to sin B over B equal to sin C over C. It's still one and the same thing, but I just want you to use the above one. So let us find what we're asked to find. Um, our A is 7. And then our sin A is sin 81 is equals to our c that is what we want to find over sine uh, our sine c it's 60 like this then let us use a calculator here um should i raise up you can't sit down okay i'm going to erase here i want us to remain with our angle so what we are going to do is we are just going to cross multiply if you cross multiply you are going to have C times sine 81 is equals to 7 times sine 60 like this then what is the next step uh, can you see 60 okay it's just a 6 but it's 60 let me adjust the camera okay 60 right then we are going to divide by sine 81 also here by sine 81 so our C is equals to 7 times sine 60 divided by sine 81. Let's do that. 7 times sine 60 divided by sine 81. So our answer is going to be equal to 6,14. This is equal to 6,14 centimeters. Right? In most cases, I advise you to do this. 7 times sine 60, you punch equal sign, then you divide by sine 81 to avoid unnecessary mistakes. Right. Uh, so it means this is equal to 6,14. Right. 
Remember, your syllabus wants you to leave uh, your answers to three significant figures unless told otherwise. But if it's degrees to one, this more place. Now, uh, let's say we're not given. Um, let's say we're not given this. Let's find this in this case, right? We still use the same formula, right? We are going to use C is complete, and then this is the angle that we are, that we are asked to find. Let me erase it. So, how are we going to find this? I want to show you how to find the angle. It's still simple and straightforward. So, uh, we are going to use the formula A over sine A is equals to C over sine C. What we are given, we are given A, our A is 7, then sine A, that is what we want to find, equal to our C is 6, 14, then uh, our sine uh, C is sine 60, that's our angle here. Then we are going to do the same thing. Let us cross multiply. If we cross multiply, we are going to end up with something that looks like this um that is an a we're going to end up with something that looks like this uh 6.14 times sine a is equal to 7 times sine 60 like this then for us to get the actual value what are we going to do we're going to divide both sides by one uh by 6.14 and also here by 6.14 then this is going to cancel out this. So sine A is equals to, right, if you punch that on a calculator, what are we going to get? 7 times sine 60 equals, then we divide by 6.14 equals 0 0.99987. You're going to get something like this, 0 0.98. Uh, seven, three, two, etc., etc. So for you to get the actual, because this is sine A, so we want angle A. Angle A is equal to arc sine when sine goes that side it becomes arc sine zero point nine blah 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 blah. Everything that is there. So if you still have your answer here, you can punch second function, then uh, sine you get arc sine, then you punch equal. You are going to notice that uh, you are going to have A is equal to 80.888 okay let us just say 80.9 like this if you round it to the nearest um 10 is going to be 80 okay remember this can be 81 if you want to write it as a whole number but if you round it to the nearest 10 it's going to be 8 why am i saying so because i want you to understand that this is just an example that uh, i just uh, write it from my mind it's not something that has been proved and uh, written down in a textbook so i want you to understand that this is how you find an angle i hope that you benefited from this subscribe at sample of tv for more beneficial lessons like this i hope that you are always revising so that you pass mathematics with a distinction remember mathematics was not difficult is not difficult and will never be difficult even if only you stay focused so you should stay focused